Welcome to the J. Kim Show. This is your host, J. Kim. I am an investor, author, and fitness entrepreneur. And for the first time in Asia, I sit down with the world's most brilliant minds in business, investing, and entrepreneurship. You'll learn all the secrets, strategies, and formulas to becoming a successful entrepreneur directly from the masters. If this is your first time listening, thank you for stopping by. This podcast is produced every week with the goal of providing actionable insight to you, the listener, with every single episode. And now, on to the show. We have a very special guest today on the show. His name is Tom Bilyeu, and he's the co-founder of the powerhouse food company, Quest Nutrition. Tom also runs a podcast himself called Inside Quest, and you probably have seen one of his videos that's gone viral in the last week. It's his video with Simon Sinek, and they talk about millennials. Tom is one of the smartest entrepreneurs I've ever met. Him and his partners probably picked one of the hardest and most oversaturated markets in the world to enter, but they decided from the start that they would chase passion over money, even if that ended in failure. In just six years, he turned a fledgling startup in an overcrowded declining market into a $1 billion unicorn company. How did he manage to do this? He shares the secret to his success and why passion always trumps money in this episode. He's a super cool dude. I know you're going to enjoy this episode. And he has some exciting news at the end of the episode on what he is working on this year in 2017. Very exciting stuff. Let's jump right in. Tom. Yes. Welcome to the Entrepreneurship in Asia podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm very, very excited to have you on the show. I'm such a big fan. Wow, thank you. Uh, man. Yeah. Um, so this is, uh, this is a new podcast in Asia, and we're really excited because we have a lot of great guests. So let's just jump right in. For those of us in Asia, and I apologize for this, who don't know you personally or, or follow you or what Quest Nutrition is all about, and I know you have a bunch of other stuff you're working on at the moment, but please just introduce yourself to us and um, just tell us how you became such a successful entrepreneur. Yeah, for sure, man. So Quest Nutrition was a company that my partners and I founded back in 2010, and it was really born of misery. And I'll go into detail on exactly what I mean by that in a minute. But the company itself uh, was just had explosive growth. Founded in 2010. In 2014, we were named as the second fastest private growing company in North America. Um, we built the company from nothing to being valued at over a billion dollars. Um, so just uh, an absolutely meteoric rise. And when I say that it was born out of misery, because um, it really was. And my partners and I had worked on a company before that, which was a technology company called Awareness Technologies. And it really was about chasing money. And it was about, you know, doing the classic entrepreneur's job of finding a niche in the market that's underserved, building a product for that market, and then really trying to develop that product out through clever marketing. And what we found was we didn't really believe in the product. We didn't have a lot of passion for it. It was fine. It was good. It met a need, but it wasn't a need that was really core and central to who we were as human beings. And so eight and a half years into building that company and, and you know, for all intents and purposes, just chasing money, we realized that there had to be a better way to do things. And so we decided that we were going to sell that company and build something that was entirely based on value creation. It was going to be something that we would believe in and have passion for whether we were winning or losing. And changing that framing in our mind and asking a new question, and the new question very pointedly was, what would we do and love even if we were failing? And the answer to that question for honestly three very different reasons, because there were three of us that founded the company, um, was nutrition. And so that was what we decided to do. And, and we went all in and and didn't know if it was going to build a big business or if it's just going to be something that we were passionate about and that we loved. But when you lead with asking the question of what delivers the most value to the customer, ironically, especially in today's hyper-connected, very social era that we live in, you really can build a massive business. And, and Quest ended up making more in a single day than our previous technology company made annually. So it, oh, wow. yeah, I mean, it's just crazy, crazy, um, transformation 
Uh, and to know that we did it by really thinking about the customer and focusing on delivering value and building a community and being really supportive of our users and not just trying to, you know, employ traditional sales and marketing tactics. It really was like, what, what can we do to make their lives better? And just amazing that now in today's world, if you do it right, that really can be a big business. That's unbelievable. Um, yeah, there's so many, there's so many uh, gold nuggets that you dropped there. But uh, I think that, yeah, you're, just, you're, you're so right. I mean, eventually, if, if you don't have the passion and you're not serving uh, other people, I think at some point there has to be a day of reckoning. I mean, you may get lucky and you may make some money along the way. But I just think that the, the, the entrepreneur's life, day to day grind, like it's, it's, a, it's impossible to sustain that unless you truly, truly believe in what you're doing. Um, so you mentioned that, so when you first started at the tech company, uh, was that sort of just, you know, you and a, a couple partners, uh, let's get together and let's make some money, let's, let's brainstorm ideas, or was there already an existing business that you joined? Yeah, so I was joining a business that was just getting off the ground, they didn't have a product yet, and it really was pretty fascinating. So I met these two guys, and they were serial entrepreneurs, really seasoned guys, and they said, hey, you're coming to the world with your handout uh, because I was pursuing a career in film. And they said, you're coming to the world with your handout. You need to stop doing that. You need to learn to be an entrepreneur. You need to learn to control your own destiny. And, you know, their pitch was you need to get rich. And I thought, mm -hmm. OK, you know, that makes a lot of sense as somebody who is artistically minded, who wants to create these amazing things, but always did it with an eye towards it also being an industry that could generate real wealth. That made a lot of sense to me. And so they said, we have a role as a copywriter. If you want to come on, be a copywriter, but don't think of yourself as a copywriter. That's just your job description. Really think of yourself as a partner in this company. Look at the problems that we face and help us overcome those problems. And, and ultimately, you can have any job you want in the company. You just have to become the right person for the job. And mm. I, I took them very seriously and, and really just went crazy acquiring new skills and trying to learn more and more valuable skills within the company so that I could rise. And by the time we sold the company, um, I had worked my way into 10% ownership and was the chief marketing officer. So wow. it, it was just a, a grueling slog because as you said, it wasn't something that I was passionate about, didn't believe in it. And, and that is very hard to sustain. Um, and ultimately, when we decided to found Quest, it was partly as a reaction to me after around the time I did that it was probably about six years in, I just said, guys, I quit. I can't do this anymore. And that, that was with ownership in the company. And, and I said, you know, mm. I give my ownership back. I don't feel like I should get anything if I'm not crossing the finish line. Like, you know, knowing what I was giving up, I was just like, I'm not willing to be unhappy. And I want to build something that I really believe in. And they felt the same way. And it was a big enough moment that, you know, we all really stopped and took stock of our lives and said, okay, what are we doing this for? If it's not about the money, like, what is it about? And that's when we began to really conceptualize, not just of our own company as something bigger than the money, but really thinking about entrepreneurship as something that was bigger than the money. And, and you know, the rest is history. Wow. So it was actually, you were actually the, the catalyst. You raised your hand and you were ready to walk away from everything. Yeah. I'd be interested to see if my partners would say the same thing, but certainly from my <laughs> perspective, that's exactly what it was, you know, and, and they said the, the now famous words on that day that I walked in and, and quit, they said, we could do this without you, but we don't want to. And that's what I needed to reconnect to them as people and to refine that joy of the struggle and the you know, building something, building something is amazing, man. And it's one of the most beautiful gifts any entrepreneur can have is to really get your hands dirty, do something that matters and build something that's going to last. It's just an incredible feeling. But for me, if I'm, if I don't feel connected to that team of people, if I don't feel mm. connected to the audience that's out there buying that product, then for me, and again, I'm speaking for myself, but for me, it really felt empty. And so what they said to me was, look, if we can't hit certain revenue targets over the next six months, then we'll sell the company. And we didn't hit the revenue targets. And, and so we ended up selling the company. So um, yeah, I, I really do think that was the catalyst that ended up leading to some pretty big changes for all of us. That's amazing. And was there a point in your that journey, that initial journey at the tech company where I mean, was it, was it, was there an inflection point where you were like, okay, I've, 
you know, I've maybe you've made you made a little bit of money, and so you weren't as fearful about that or or, ch- or pursuing that as hard as before. Where there, you know, there's a shift in your mentality that was like, okay, maybe money isn't the right solution, isn't isn't what I'm looking for here. I want to build something bigger. I want to connect deeper with my customers. Was there a point that you remember distinctly? There wasn't a point where I said, okay, you know, I've made enough money now and, and I don't have any fear of that. Not, not at that time. Um, I've mm. since had that moment and I can walk you through what that felt like. But back at awareness, it really was realizing that all the money in the world isn't worth hating your day-to-day life. It just, it, it actually doesn't make sense. Like when you really think about, okay, I, I'm on this grand adventure. I want to make all this money. I have this vision of what I'm, I'm going to do with that money. You know, and, and that's, that's what drives people to garner those resources, right? They want to do something with it. And once it seemed like this money actually isn't certain, like I'm making more money than I've ever made, but it's not the kind of like exit. And now you never have to think about money and you can go do all the amazing things you want to do with that capital. It was just like my lifestyle was better. And it was certainly was a better lifestyle than I'd ever had. And I could do things that I hadn't done before. So, but it was success with no fulfillment. And if you know, Tony Robbins, he said success Mm -hmm. without fulfillment is the ultimate failure. And that's, that's how I felt. Now it wasn't the kind of success that I've had since doing quest, but it was better than anything I'd ever experienced. And it still felt so empty that it just left me asking that the most fundamental question any human being can ask themselves, which is why am I doing this? And when your answer is, I don't know anymore, that's when you know, like you have got to change something. And I'm, I'm a real believer in the now, the present, like all you have is this moment right? So for all you Mm. know, and this is an, I love this thought exercise for all, you know, right before this call, you were woken up out of the matrix. All of your memories of the past are actually fake. And it is entirely an illusion, your entire past up to this moment. And if that's true, how would that impact you moving forward? And for me, it made me realize that the only thing that truly exists is the moment that I'm living in and everything else, maybe it's fake. I mean, obviously I don't actually think it's fake, but if it were, Mm. it hints at the malleability of all that, that you could Mm. reconceive of yourself, that, that it's really a jail of your own making. And it's, you know, all this baggage that you carry with you, all these lessons that you've learned, but what if some of the lessons you've learned are holding you back and you really need to be learning a different uh, lesson. And so all of that was, you know, rolled up into that, I thought I was supposed to be pursuing money, but that's not feeling right. And really, I feel like what I should be chasing is fulfillment. But at the same time, I'm not interested in living like a monk. Like I want to garner real resources. I want to control massive amounts of capital because I have a vision for my life and what I want to do with my life at the extreme end, it's going to be made infinitely easier by having access to capital. So I wanted to pursue both. I want capital and I want to be playing at the highest levels of business and be having just unimaginable success. But at the same time, that all has to be born out of pursuing something that delivers fulfillment. Right, right, man, that's so powerful. Because uh, so, you know, I, my background is I, I used to be a banker, and, and I'm still in finance, I, I'm still an investor. But, uh, you know, I used to work on the sell side and for a big investment bank. And I think that there are so many people out there that they won't admit it, or they're they're afraid, or maybe their their life circumstances have gotten in the way now, um, but are in that exact same position where they they got into the business because of money. Uh, and I know I did 100%. I'll 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 be the first to say I got into the business for money. I chased it for a long time. After the financial crisis, I realized what am I doing with my life, right? And it's really sad to see a lot of people now that are still in that rat race, in that wheel. Uh, just spinning because they they don't think they can make a move. They 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 always say, "I have no other skills," or you know, "I have a family, I have a mortgage," blah blah blah, and whatever excuse it is, uh, they just can't make the move. You know, and I, and I love how you weave the Matrix because that's one of my favorite movies as well uh, into all of your work. Um, so it's such a great uh, backstory, and I think that it's really refreshing to hear that you know it's not just people that jump into finance. They're not chasing money. I mean, people in all industries get into what they're doing for the wrong reason a lot of times. And so uh, until you can actually find 
your your why and and your purpose, uh, you know, you're you're going to be you're going to go down the wrong path. So, um, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, let's. I want to switch uh, gears and talk about Quest uh, for a bit. Um, you know, I'm a huge fan. I'm I'm in the fitness space as well myself, and uh, I just discovered Quest Bars maybe two years ago on lo- online, and uh, now only now I'm s- starting to see them pop up in Asia. Uh, in different retailers, you know, the, I was at the Arnold Classic uh, recently, which is the first time he came to Asia this year, and there was a booth there, and I was so happy. I was like, "Yeah, Tom's the man." Um, so you you did an incredible, you guys did an incredible job, like you said, six years, uh, explosive growth. Now you guys, you know, unicorn company. You're all over the place. After you found Quest, and you guys decided you're going to go all in on this fitness thing. Uh, in a declining uh, market, overcrowded, you know, what was it, what made you different? You know, I mean, there's so many nutrition, you know, food companies, protein companies out there. How did you guys actually pull this off? We really were the first to understand two different things that that came together right at the right time. So one that there is an underserved niche in the market, which is people that want convenient but non-compromising food. So all of the protein bars that were on the market, even though there were like 1,600, I mean, just an absurd number, they all of them had sugar. And what we didn't understand was the reason they had sugar wasn't because the makers of the bar were evil or whatever. It was just because the equipment that you could make protein bars on had grown up in lockstep with the use of high fructose corn syrup. So I'm sure many of them went to the contract manufacturers and said, hey, we want to make this bar. It doesn't use sugar. And the contract manufacturers told them the same thing they told us, because we never intended to make our own bars either, that you're going to have to put some sort of liquid sugar into the bar. One, it makes it taste good. Two, it preserves it. And three, it'll actually allow it to run through the equipment. And when every other company was told that they did it and they may not have wanted to do it. Maybe they put as little in as they could possibly bear, but they did it. And we took a different approach and we said, that doesn't make sense. We told ourselves that we were going to do this right, or we weren't going to do it. And so we decided to begin engineering our own equipment and become our own manufacturers. And that's the thing that I think quest is never going to get enough credit for was our willingness to engineer our own equipment, become our own manufacturers, and really bite off this absolutely massive challenge. But that ended up being our differentiator. And then on top of that, we understood that social media was going to be huge before other people did. And so this Mm. is back in 2009, when we first started talking about the company, about doing it, I laid out a whole plan for how I thought social media was going to impact the space and what it was going to be like and that we should be going after our thousand true fans. And this gave us a chance Mm -hmm. to do that all for free and to build value and not try to market or sell to them, but build a community and really deliver value to their lives. And so in doing that, we built this incredibly supportive community that was very vocal on social, really understood digital, really understood social media and how to connect by being authentic, by being transparent, and then couple that with a product that hadn't existed until that moment, and it just blew up. That's unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, you raise an interesting point. I mean, social media right now. I, you guys were, you know, on the forefront. You guys, you guys went in early. It's been very, very successful for you. I follow you, your channel, and your stuff, and um, and we'll talk about that a little bit later, but. I have, a, you know, I just wanted to ask you uh, what your thoughts were on sort of the explosion of content online right now, the noise. How how does a company uh, or an entrepreneur that's trying to navigate in this in the sea of of noise? How do they stand out from you know the the thousands or tens of thousands of other channels and you know noise and 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 you know social media? Uh, outlets that are out there, you know, how, what, how do you make your mark? So the, you make your mark very simply by adding value. We'll talk more about how somebody adds value through the noise. But first I want everybody listening to this podcast to take a second and be so ecstatic to be living in this moment where what you have to do is figure out how to add more value to somebody to cut through that noise, because it used to be, you had to have such a massive marketing and advertising budget to compete with the people who controlled the airways because 
Mm. People's attention was not democratized. If you wanted right. someone's attention, you had to pay for it, man. And I'm talking pay for it in seven, eight, nine figures, like right. big, right. huge commitments. And that's why everything was consolidated. And it seemed like this just impossible task to get onto the airwaves because you had to have access to real capital. Now, now you've got to be creative. There's no question. You've got to deliver real value more than anybody else if you're going to cut through the noise. And that is a very daunting task, but that's up to you, right? That's up mm. to how hard are you willing to work to develop the skill set you need to develop in order to deliver value to somebody. But that's on you. You don't have to pay for that. There's books. I mean, Jesus, these days you can get an Audible account for 25 bucks a month and you can read essentially an infinite amount of books, mm -hmm. get in there, learn the things that you need, engage with other people on social media. I am literally right now, I am literally trying to give away every secret I own. And if you're following me socially, dude, I'm trying to give it away. I want to know what happens when we uncover the next 1000 Elon Musk's, right? People who are willing to think really big and then execute and execution is what matters and people that aren't willing to give away all their secrets it's because they don't have any they actually think that they can somehow give away a secret sauce there's no secret sauce the only thing there is is unending execution like really following through and knowing how to make somebody's life better somebody that you've never even met you have to find a way to improve their life and they have to know it was you now you do that and you will cut through the clutter instantly Man, that's awesome. Yeah. I mean, for all of our listeners, Inside Quest, you know, Tom, you do an unbelievable job. It's such a high, high quality production. And uh, it makes sense because I guess you do have a film background. So uh, I, I should have known better. Um, it's such, so good. You, you, you definitely drop so much uh, free knowledge. Uh, it really reminds me uh, of Gary Vaynerchuk. And I, I know you were in his office uh, recently because I saw the Daily V. Uh, we had him on the show a couple of weeks back and you guys both do the same thing and it's so awesome because you just give, 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 give. Um, you know, the amount that I've, m myself personally, I've learned from just watching your show and the guests on your show uh, is is unbelievable. So so thank you for that. And for aspiring entrepreneurs out there, I know that you talk about sort of hard work and grit and how that's, you know, that's all on you. Um, maybe you can talk about that a little bit. You know, what sort of advice would you give to let's say uh, someone that's stuck in the matrix or stuck in their job and they, that they hate, like what would you tell them? What, what's the first thing they should do right now? All right, so this is going to be really counterintuitive advice and this is going to be something that a lot of people are going to take exception to and I will only ask you to do one thing and that is mm. look at my track record. And the reason I say that is because what I'm about to say is going to anger some people. <laughs> and, and I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm glad it's this way. I'm just saying it is this way. What people have to do is understand, like, I love helping people. I love it, man. It makes me feel good. I think it's a beautiful thing. I think it's so awesome when other people help me and so many people have helped me get where I am. And I am so grateful to all of them. But at the end of the day, it comes down to that chip on your shoulder. It comes down to having something to prove to yourself, whether it's to you or to somebody else to be so desperate to do something with your life, to matter, to have fulfillment, that you keep going long after it starts sucking. You keep going long after it's boring because you have a vision of where you're going and what you want to do. And quite frankly, the person you want to become, and you're willing to pay an obscenely high price to become that person. Until somebody wants it, and, and the, the best story, and it has been told time and time and time again, but People just don't listen. And it goes like this. I'll give you the very truncated version. A guy is seeking a, a master teacher, a monk, if you will, and he finds him. And that master is meant to teach him how to be successful. And the master dunks his head underwater. And just before he passes out, he brings his head back up and the student gasps for air. And then he dunks his head again. And just before he passes out, pulls him back up and he's gasping for air. And he says, the moment you want success, as badly as you want your next breath of air, you will be successful. Now, so good. It's a great story. It's been told time and time again. I have the chills just telling you now. But what people miss is you've got to go beyond the chills. You've got to go beyond how good that story feels. And you've got to get to the point where do you actually want it that badly? And here's the thing if you don't, that's fine. 
Like just own that and stop beating yourself up for not succeeding in the way that you want or being afraid or whatever. I honestly think I am a terrible role model for the vast majority of the world. For the vast majority of the people listening to even this podcast, they should not take my advice. And the reason <laughs> they shouldn't take my advice is a large portion of my life is about gut checking myself and asking myself, do I really even want it this bad? Like, am I really willing to go this hard for this long? And to give you an idea, the mantra I say to myself is, if I'm awake, I'm either working out or working. Now, <laughs> there are for sure times that I take time to be with my wife and be with my family. So I don't want to paint a delusional picture. But people need to understand like, how often, though, it is true that I'm either working out or I'm working. And when people get to that point, they will see it requires a hunger. Now, I can help them and hopefully save them the near decade that I spent chasing money is to chase something you believe in and make the demand that that makes you money. But you've got to make the demand that in your pursuit of wealth creation, that it is in service of something beautiful, something that you believe in, something that serves people, something that has a mission. But I'm telling you, especially now today in a social economy where people want to know who you are, they want to connect with you and they will reward you by buying your products. If you're a person that brings value to their life, they will reward you for that. That you can build something extraordinary now through service. And that is, it's just, it's never happened before. It's never been this easy ever before in human history because you didn't have social media to allow people within seconds of an interaction with you to have a global audience to tell people that, holy hell, that guy, that company, that girl, that whatever, like they really just took care of me and I want everyone to know about it. Yeah, that's so powerful. I mean, so, yeah, it, it's, it's so great how you reframed my question because I was like, oh, it's, you know, it's, it's so daunting. There's such a sea of social media. Well, you know, no, it's not daunting. It's we're lucky, right? We're lucky. We're in the, like you said, we're in the best. Uh, it's easier now to build a business than ever, ever before. Um, awesome. Awesome. So, so good. So good. Um, so uh, let's, I just want to, you know, we have to look to wrap up soon. So I know you're transitioning out of your role uh, as the president of Quest uh, into just the founder role. I know you have something big in the pipeline. I know you can't really talk about it. I, I think you said January 4th. January 4th. To, that's the big day. Yeah. Is there any, any sort of hints that you clues you can drop? I mean, this, 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 this won't come out for a while, but yeah, man, I, I'll, I'll tell you spiritually exactly what it's about. I believe right now there is an entire generation of human beings that are frustrated. They believe the system is working against them, that it's holding them down, that it's corrupt. And yet at the same time, those very same people, they want to matter and they want to have impact. And if you look at the heroes that they worship, one of the most revealing is the obsession, at least here in the US, the obsession with Iron Man, who is the tale of a multi-billionaire eccentric genius who doesn't ever need to work again. He could go retire on an island. He's got all the money any human being could ever want. And what does he do? He dresses up like a superhero, puts his life in jeopardy and fights crime. Why? <laughs> because people want to matter. And now, is, and this is what I've been talking about this whole interview. Now is that magic moment for those people to learn how to build a business that can matter. And the superhero armor that people need to be wearing today is that of the entrepreneur, somebody who can build something, somebody who can build something that matters. But you've got to learn to do that shit. Like people don't know how to do it. And the moment they can accept that it's not about whether you're a born entrepreneur or not, I am not a born entrepreneur. Okay. Right. I had to learn how to be an entrepreneur. It was a brutally difficult journey. And oh, dear God, has it been worth every step of the way? And I took myself from broke to fantastically wealthy. And I did I it, it once I finally figured out that what I needed to chase was getting really good at something like right. true excellence. And that as long as the thing you're trying to become truly excellent at, is the thing you care most about in the world, you'll be fine. So I want to help that generation or any person who thinks like that, honestly, they don't have to be a part of the you know millennial generation or generation Z or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. They just need to want 
to change everything about their life, to learn, to grow, to empower themselves, and then do all of that in service of helping other people. Like if they've got a mission, I want to facilitate that. So we're, we're putting together, and this is where people get confused and I'll try to make it nice and simple. We're putting (laughs) together a company that is going to develop the world's largest library of empowering intellectual property that comes in two forms, one businesses. So think of us as Y Combinator for a new generation. And then Mm. the other is content. So think of us as the new Disney. And if you look at what Walt Disney was and what Disney has become, it's amazing, right? You had this dreamer, a guy who could see a world that didn't exist and he was going to do it all through this creative medium of cartooning. And he's created some of the most culturally relevant and enduring characters ever. Mm -hmm. Now they were aimed at kids, but Disney now understanding that it's really about that intellectual property, they're buying up the most culturally relevant IP of today. They've bought Marvel Studios, right? Right. The Iron Man that we were talking about. That's now a Disney Mm -hmm. property. They bought Star Mm -hmm. Wars, which has defined multiple generations. Yes. And that, like, because of my background, I understand how movies, books, TV shows, they inform culture. And there's a reason that America became a superpower in lockstep with exporting media. So I understand that power. I understand its power to shape people. And so by combining both traditional businesses with empowering content, we're going to create something that's never been seen before. So this is a call for anybody out there that has a business idea and they need help or they have content that they are creating that they believe in and they just don't know how to get attention for it. That's what the gap that we're trying to fill. Holy wow. This is, this is so exciting. I can't wait. (laughs) I can't wait. Uh, wow. Okay. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Tom, it was so good to have you on the show. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm mindful of your time. Uh, where can people find you, follow you, uh, and you know, uh, socially, social media and, and, and whatnot. At Tom Bilyeu, and my last name is spelled B as in Bravo, I-L-Y-E-U. Find me. I'm all about delivering value to the community. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Medium, uh, and just watch for the content that we're going to be putting out. The new show drops in January. It is going to be... Um, it, it's going to be even better than Inside Quest. We're so excited about what we're putting together and uh, can't wait for people to come be a part of it. We're all about community. So follow us, join the newsletter. Um, yeah, get on board. You won't be sorry. Awesome. Okay, everyone listening, get on and follow Tom. Uh, January 4th, huge announcement. Uh, thank you again, Tom. I really appreciate having you on, and, uh, and, and thanks a lot again. You got it, man. Thanks for having me on. It was a pleasure. All right. Take care. All right, you too. Bye. Bye. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. All the show notes and links can be found over at jkimshow.com. Come back often and make sure you subscribe, rate, and review. Don't forget to join us next week for another exciting episode of The J. Kim Show. I'd love to hear your comments. You can find me on Twitter at jkimmer, J-A-Y-K-I-M-M-E-R. See you guys next week. This podcast is brought to you by Hack Your Fitness, the high achiever's guide to getting ripped in under three hours a week. If you're anything like me, you're probably working a full-time job or jobs and trying to find time to balance family life, social life, and last but not least, fitness. Look, I get it. I'm a full-time investor and entrepreneur myself and father of two. So how am I able to stay fit year-round without spending hours and hours in the gym killing myself on the cardio machine? After struggling for the last 15 years trying every workout and diet under the sun, I finally designed a system that allows me to achieve and maintain single-digit body fat for life in under 3 hours a week. Cardio not required. Head on over to hackyour.fitness and download my free 13-page guide that teaches you the simple science behind efficient fitness and smart nutrition and gives you everything you need to know to finally take control of your life. That's hackyour.fitness.